there's a conflict happening in the Islamic Republic of the Sudan that has caused all of these people to flee. The government forces are bombing their villages, burning their homes. They were being annihilated. Forcing them out and into South Sudan. And the world wasn't saying anything about it. The place where we're standing now is in the newly independent country of South Sudan. And about 10 miles from here is the border of the Islamic Republic of North Sudan. A year ago, refugees started pouring in across the border here into this community where we are right now. They were escaping and fleeing from the violence and the fighting that was happening over on that side. <laughs> Maban County has the largest population of refugees of anywhere in South Sudan. The need here is greater than anywhere else in, in the country. When refugees come to Maban, they're fleeing an area of fighting and they're coming to the camps. But life in the camps is still extremely difficult for them. Every day we see lots of C-sections, wounds from trauma, all sorts of surgeries for all the refugees coming for whatever reason. We're the only site that provides surgery in Mabon. There's probably not more than a handful of surgeons in South Sudan that are South Sudanese trained surgeons. Dr. Attar is one of the very few men to have the education that he has and still be willing to come and live and work in a refugee camp. I'm 24 hours on call. The emergency can come at any time. Sometimes you do the emergency, you come to, maybe you thought it was an end, and that emergency comes. So there is no limit where I can say, oh, I'm now free, no. But he, God gives you his strength. Doro Camp is a population of about 45,000. And according to the registration estimates, 25% of that population is under the age of five. This is a place where malnourished children come and receive therapeutic feeding supplies and help bring them and nurse them back to health. <laughs> <laughs> On the hospital compound, we also operate a stabilization center for severely malnourished children. As many of them have some kind of medical complication that disables them from eating properly or for their food to be properly digested or, or metabolized. When children come with severe malnutrition, most of the time their immunity is compromised, so they will present with most infections like tuberculosis. You know, they often suffer from pneumonias, they suffer from malaria, and these are killer conditions, especially in children under five years. So when they come here, we have to start them on special kind of milk to treat the malnutrition, and also we have to treat the underlying conditions. They definitely, they definitely would die if they weren't brought in and, uh, and treated in our center. When we flee from our home area, we left many things back. We left Bible and songbook and everything we left back. There are so many Christians in this camp right now. We start to send every elders of the churches four by four to go around the village to read the Gospels for those whom are not yet have good news that Jesus Christ came into the world and he died for our sins. While we are here, we are looking for some people to train us, pastor training, elders training, youth training, and Sunday school teacher training. Samaritan Purse will help us with those things. Samaritan's Purse will continue to be here and serve these people as long as there's a need on the ground. 
people that have been through more devastating things than I can ever imagine. And yet they're always smiling, always excited. It just fills me with so much joy that I get the opportunity to serve with these people. There's war, disease, and poverty that we're, we're having to confront on a daily basis. And many times people will run away from that kind of challenge and those things that are happening. Our calling as Samaritan's Purse is to move towards it and to touch it. These people were telling me, ah, you are mad, why are you going? This is the place of war, you will go and die. I told them, ah, it's not me. It's God who knows what, whether I will go to die. I have a complete confidence that that is always God who intervenes in situations. We have some statements which says, really, we, we treat, but God heals. So this is exactly what I come up with, all these situations, a number of situations. God works on his own ways. It's not we, it's not anybody. I want a mom. The quest, huh? Sometimes I'm going to go to the diglom medida. Please, you shall eat. Please, you shall eat.